Welcome back. There are more bullying allegations this morning within the Labor Party. First, the claim Senator Kimberly Kitching was the victim of a mean girl's culture in the months and years before her death. And this morning, former MP Emma Hassar says she was so badly bullied, she developed a heart condition. And she's called Anthony Albanese a, quote, gaslighting narcissist. Oof. Strong words. And Emma joins us now. Emma, thanks for your time this morning. Look, um, we, we spoke to Labor Deputy Leader Richard Miles on the show a little earlier, and he says now is not the time to launch an inquiry. What do you think? I think firstly I'd like to say my condolences are with Kimberly's family and her close friends. It's quite a shock death. Um, but I think Richard Miles needs to add what Anthony Albanese is currently doing, which is traversing the countryside, electioneering and drumming up votes and support for the upcoming election, with not a pause in his schedule. And if not now, then when? The Labor Party weren't interested in taking action on what happened to me. Five, almost five years ago now. They've had a lot of time since then. There's been a lot of water under the bridge and they're still happy to turn a blind eye. I would suggest that the Labor Party are doing what they've always done, which is pretend nothing's gone wrong and then next week it'll be business as usual and they'll never address the culture of the Labor Party. Were you aware um, at any time of Senator uh, Kitching's claims? No, I wasn't, but I have certainly been on the receiving end of Christina Keneally's treatment and I've been on the receiving end of quite a, a number of other senior women within the Labor Party who behave in such a way. But I think, Carl, the telling factor is when I did face media scrutiny and a barrage of unfettered and untested allegations, um, I was completely ostracised by my party, by people who you know, should have supported me. So I can imagine those last few months for Kimberley would have been quite lonely. They would have been quite quite terrifying, really, because these are people that you work with every day and, and there is an enormous amount of power um, within those party, those party rooms. And I can't imagine what that felt like for her. And I am absolutely not at all shocked that um, in, in the wake of her death that these revelations are being levelled at, at the Labor Party and, and the women within it. So are you saying there is a culture of bullying within the Labor Party and specifically senior women? There is definitely a culture of bullying within the Labor Party. You know, we've known about the faceless men for a long time. I think the term crumb maidens has been coined in the last sort of two years to describe women who benefit from, you know, upholding those patriarchal systems that the men have been playing in for a long time. And that certainly extends to the women. Um, I came out of the chamber in December, um, I think December 6, 2018, when I finally, you know, stood up and, and, and took my voice back and, and, and got out of this culture of, of shame and silence that I felt and gave a speech on the floor of Parliament. I walked out and Anne Ali looked me up and down like, you know, I was in high school again and she said, oh, that was disgusting, simply because I dared to push back and say enough's enough and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm taking action about uh, what's been said about me and what's happened. Um, I had no support from those women. Um, they were certainly um, very quiet. None of them came to my defence and you know, the, the things that were going on behind closed doors at that stage for me, um, I knew the depths of the bullying and the way that they were, you know, lining up together to ostracise and to keep me out. Um, I knew exactly how that feels. So I'm not surprised at all to read and to hear about what Kimberly was experiencing. So clearly, um, she, she made some complaints um, and she went through some of those um, you know, party processes, but it didn't go anywhere. Uh, did you make such complaints? Yeah. And and was there anyone else that you had a problem with and, and that didn't report uh, your accusations of bullying? Yeah. Yeah, Carl, I had been making um, complaints to everybody from the General Secretary of the New South Wales Labor Party right through to our party leaders, to Tony Burke's office, about the sexual harassment that I was facing. I went into Tanya Plibersek's office one day and I broke down and, and then she subsequently broke down and all she could say to me was, I'm really sorry, I thought this had stopped, this is what I was subjected to when I came in here and I said, well, it hasn't stopped and it won't stop and I really need some, some action taken. And, and nobody did anything about it. Nobody took any action. So I'm not surprised that even if 
Kimberley had raised it that nobody did anything because that's that's how they operate. They're going to say um, they're going to say you, you've got you an know, axe to one, grind, Emma. Um, you know, obviously um, you, you're not getting along with with people in the party, yeah. and then you're trying to take them down. Um, Carl, I haven't moved from you know my position. Um, since late sort of 2018, early 2019, I might not have had the words at the time to describe the treatment and what I was, what was happening to me. And, and in part, I was still quite loyal to the party. Um, but I've since, you know, you know, healed from from the trauma of what took place for me. And, and like you said in the lead into this, you know, I developed a heart condition. I was quite unwell, and you know, I've been asking since the end of 2019. Um, quite directly from Anthony Albanese himself to apologise and to atone and, and to take steps to fix this. Now, the telling thing about my situation, Carl, is that in the wake of the Emma Hassar scandal, if you like, the Labor Party quietly went about changing the rules of the party, changing, trying to address this, this issue that they had. But they never once consulted me. They never once invited me to a meeting to ask how this all unfolded. They never once consulted with me. And I think Brittany Higgins had the same sorts of comments to level um, you know, at, at her own party at the time. You know, how can you fix something when you don't ask the survivor and the victim who's who's been in this for a really long time. I don't have an axe to grind. What I want to see is that politics becomes a really safe place for women and currently mm -hmm. party politics is not safe for women and I've been saying the same thing now for quite a number of years. I gave the same evidence to Kate Jenkins. Kate Jenkins and I have been discussing this matter since 2018 of how it gets cleaned up. That report that she wrote, that, you know, it's probably collecting dust on a shelf because clearly if if Kimberly Kitching has been making these um, claims for quite some time that she was mm. the victim of bullying and a targeted campaign within our own party, then they but, certainly are not taking any of it seriously. But, but and, Emma, typically you you're listen? just you're just referring then to 2018. I mean, it was in 2018 there were accusations of bullying that were actually levelled against you as well at that time. I mean, it's it's. I, I mean, are you are you guilty of doing that yourself in the past? And is this just something? Is this just a culture that has existed in federal parliament that for a long time people just go, well, it's just part of the job? Yeah, it, people do say it's the rough and tumble of politics. And what I got a lot of during that time was, oh, you know, politics is a game. And I, you know, I totally rebuffed that statement. It is not a game. It's actually you're dealing with people's lives. Now, just on that, you know, that claim, Ali, where you said I was accused of bullying. Let's just you know, go back over that for a hot minute. Um, the person who made that allegation, that one person who was named in that complaint has had two AVOs since that period of time. He's continued to stalk and harass me, even on the other side of the country, where I moved to, to get away from him and to get away from all of that. There was nothing substantiated and no, not a single witness turned up to the BuzzFeed defamation case to support any of those allegations. So I put it to you, Ali, and, and to Carl, and also to the Labor Party. There was not a single shred of evidence. There is not a complainant who was willing to come forward and back up those things. So actually, what was the bullying and, and can you substantiate it? And the answer is no. It was a, it was a, a method to, to dispose of me and conveniently wipe, wipe me away from any of, 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 of what was happening in the Labor Party at the time. And I think that you remember that substantive, um, you know, accusation of me being some kind of um, Sharon mm. Stone and, and some promiscuous woman who was floating around the halls of parliament, which is also a load of BS. But and, and yeah, look, and all that at the time was shown that it wasn't, that none, of, none of that was proven. I think some of the allegations were, were proved yeah. to have merit from some of your staff about unreasonable conduct. But as you say, that's that's another that's sort of side issue there. But um, I just thought it was important and when I we're talking about the, this um, one to raise the... that. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah, um, I think um, uh, I've, Kimberly Kitching had raised that K Christina Keneally had pulled her into a very similar meeting that I was pulled into. No witnesses, you know, nothing in writing and just this basically, um, you know, avalanche and, and, and attack. But the Labor Party's got a problem. They can't, you know, just in the mm. same way that you can't claim to need to have a daughter to understand what rape is like for a woman, you can't cite to have 50% of your caucus as female to cite that you are good on women. Mm. You, you, you just can't. It just simply is, is not the case at all. Interesting yeah. to talk to you. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for joining us, Emma. We really appreciate it. Thanks, thank Emma. You. G'day, it's Ali.
and Carl. Thanks for watching the Today YouTube channel. <laughs> Subscribe now for brand new videos every day and exclusive bonus clips. Ali, say please. Please? Why? Please? I don't know. <laughs>